Hey guys, another episode of the Trading Vault and today we've got Ricardo on and um, quite looking forward to to having him on. Actually, uh, I think it's the second or third week where the schedules have, uh, haven't been aligned, but uh, this week starting early and Ricardo, just want you to introduce yourself to the viewers. I'm Ricardo Sanos, uh, new in the field. Fairly new, one and a half years in the game, six months of blowing, 10 months of being profitable. Yeah, that's my introduction. And uh, Ricardo, where, where are you currently based? Where are you from? Joburg. Joburg. I'm in Josie, yeah. Okay, fresh, fresh start. Uh, Ricardo, so you've you've mentioned that you are still fairly, fairly new into the industry and uh, how did you get into into trading, where did things kick off for you? Say two years ago, went to visit my my wife's uh, sister and, and her husband spoke about trading. Didn't take to it. Well, that was my brother-in-law. Didn't take to it. And a few months later, my brother spoke to me about trading. And yeah, that's when I got into it. But I regretted the day I, I was introduced to it. <laughs> I cursed the day I heard about trading because that thing put me in my mood. Proper, proper. You know? For me, it was a, a, a 24, 23, 5 casino that I could have at home. You know? And yeah, yo, bro, I, I, I learned lessons in this game. Because I, I came into this game with put money. So even though I'm new in the industry, I think I've learned lessons, you know, as big as people that's got five years in this industry because of the amount of money that I was gambling with. Yes, that is uh, that is unfortunately the thing. Uh, weirdly enough, I also years ago had a at somebody that I know know of and um, also very wealthy individual and he actually started dabbling also a big gambler usually the guys that have money have some some sort of gambling trait and unfortunately in life sometimes you need to take a gamble to to make it big it's not that all gambles pay off but sometimes in life there is a gamble that puts you on the map but anyway and he started dabbling on trade, uh, is it five plus 500? Very, mm. very easy to use, very uh, simple, the platform to use. And he started with, uh, I think he deposited a, a million bucks. And he was up about four or five million within, I would say, two, three months trading uh, orange juice and coffee futures. I don't know why he was trading that, but See, anyway. It is, don't yeah he was he's, he was just gambling he didn't really have a clue of what he was doing and then uh, a few months later saw him again and i asked him how's that account looking and he actually said no it's blown i think he peaked at around about seven eight bar and basically blew it uh, to smithereens so sometimes the that side of things bringing money into it and uh seeing the potential and then just continuously throwing money at it. it's also not a good thing but like you mentioned learning lessons within a short space of time that maybe took somebody else five years to master um maybe shorten that period to to 12 months or two years true, true. If, if i might ask did you come from an entrepreneurial background business let me take you a bit in there so Grew up with my grand, right? Uh, mother was never, mother was never around. So grew up with my granny. She used to work, but she used to earn 30 rand a day in a clothing shop, 150 rand a week. So I, I, I used to, you know, things are always hard. Back in, where I'm from, you need to, when you're in school, you wear grasshoppers, college pants, Levi shirt, you know? you styling in school, but that stuff I couldn't get because why? There was no money at home, you check? 
So what I started doing was I started taking my, my taxi fare that my granny used to give me every day. And I started going to the taxi rank. There was a game shop there. And the taxi drivers used to gamble with pool, playing pool, snooker. So I started learning, learning how to play pool. And I became, you know, very good at that shit. Where that was my, that was my, like, my hustle. I used to go every morning, beat the taxi drivers, make money on the pool table. And then I go to school and I feel like, oh, do what youngsters do. So when I used to, that, that now started, I started seeing, hey, I can make money in the hustle. You check for me, that is a hustle. Went to school. When I was at school, I used to play call a card and check or spin, you know, dice. That was my thing. I was always looking for ways to, <laughs> to make money. You check. Uh, uh, the hustler came in me from that age, dog. Anyway, granny passed away. 1914, was forced to stay with my mother now. I don't know, a lot of things ever go so lacquer for a few months. I, my, my, my mother's cousin's uh, husband, my uncle, he had a welding school. So he picked up, you know, the family, they, they used to look down on me. So they, he picked up the story, what he gave me an entry level welding course for free. My uncle uh, found out he gave me an entry level welding course, right? In the entry level welding course, I was around 16, 17, I think so. I needed to man up in the world because things wasn't like you check. My granny was my shoulder to lean on, you know, my backbone in this life. And when she went, there was no one. I had another, my mother's brother, he, when my granny was still alive, he used to bring us groceries, what, 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 you know. She would drive trucks. But when she passed, the, all those relationships, you know, split. And it was just me, you know. I went to Secunda. Looked for work. While looking for work, there's a place called Cecil there. While looking for work, I had nowhere to stay. So there was a place in Secunda town. Some people who's watching this that know about it might, might, might understand what I'm talking about. There's a post office with steps and then there's a shelter, you no know, a roof and door door. So in the night I used to sleep by the post office. I used to walk around in town in the day, get the card boxes, that was my mattress for the night, put them in a manhole, to beg my garages for money for food and shit like that thing. And I used to play pool. There was a place called Las Vegas on the taxi ramp. And the taxi drivers used to also play pool. There. So that was part of my hustle. If I hustle in a day in the town, I go and make more money there. And you know, I had some money for float. I found a found a, eventually found a job in, in well, back to this. I used to sleep in by the post office in the morning, get up, put your post mattress, uh, card boxes back in a manual, continue hustling, you know. Anyway, I managed to get a job, but not as a welder. I got a job as a scaffold director, scaffold director assistant. Uh, 10, I got only 10 rand 50 an hour. So now life got a bit better now. You check, I'm working, but still no money because you have to work two or three weeks in advance, you know, and get paid your first salary. So I moved in on, on the rank in Secunda. There's, there's a place called, it's two small buildings. Be careful and stick and ice. You check? Yeah. So I moved into stick and ice. That's a place where people from all walks of life, all over South Africa, come to live there on their card boxes and stuff like that there. And, and, and you know, find work. And when you find work, obviously, you know, life must start picking up. So we live there. I'm talking about you living with 40, 50 people in one small room, you know, and all walks of life. So you have to be a certain type of way. You check. Mm, mm. You, you, you can't, you can't, I, I don't want to get into it, but no, you, no, can't you can't be soft. Play. You no, understand? No, you can't play games. You can't be You must sleep 
one eye open on your back, straight up, you understand? Because you don't know what's happening here around you, chip. It's rough. Anyway, worked my first month. While I was working my first month now, uh, while, a little bit back, while I was uh, sleeping by the post office, there, there was a, a, a tap, there's a tap by the taxi rank. So that was where I used to part in the mornings. But I used to go there half past three because the taxi start coming in at four to, you know, bringing in the yeah. first loads. So half past three, you'd have a red tap hitting the sign of the cross, you know, quick wash. <laughs> and then you must be out again before the people come and it's winter, bro. So goodness, got cold. So sometimes in the morning, you find ice under the tap. You must break that ice off, open the tap, wait for those drops to come out. Okay, now I got to work now. I moved into the second ice. Now, in the second ice, there was on the taxi rank. This is literally on the taxi rank. There's a place next door called Las Vegas. That's where I used to play pool. On the taxi, on, on, while we're working now, on the taxi rank, there's a lady. There was a lady called Mama J. There was a whole lot of them there. They used to sell coffee, Maguinias, Fat Cook, Poloni, you check. So now I was working, this mom's helped me with breakfast every morning until I got paid, you check. So she used to sit by the toilet. She, she, she had her own thing there. I'll never forget that woman, but I, I, I really want to go and visit her one, one soon, soon day. She gave me food every day, bro, on account. And now I was working so I could, uh, you know, you find this people called Mashonisas on site. They lend you money and things like that. You give them your ID. You check. I was now. I need. I, I need to upgrade a little bit. So there was a, a stadium not so far away, a soccer stadium. That stadium had a shower. So the security used to charge me five rand a day to shower. So every night after work, you to, you go. You pay your five rand. You to shower. You go sleep. Next morning you up. Brush your teeth. You out for work. So. I had that process. After the first salary, they don't really have money because, you know, accounts, what, 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 borrowing here, borrowing there, the struggle was real coming out the squat. So I had to stay another month. I continued with that life for another month. The second month after of pay, I got a job. I got, I got a place, uh, uh, a mkuku, a shack in Mbalentli in a location. Got a, got a place there worked and then I managed, I managed to save up for a welding course. That's now, you know, a proper welding course because I had an entry level with welding course. I managed to do my organ. Done that, got work, living life, tasty money, got a flat, what, what, what. Then I got pulled into the, to the wrong side of life again because along the road, you know, I was, I was always, I always ended up on the wrong side of life, understand, doing wrong shit, because it was, it was easier to me. I grew myself up. My granny was always working, so the streets raised me. Mm. The streets raised me, so that was my comfort zone. And, and I found myself back there, left work, left construction, moved to PE. PE, I had my first son at 19 and I don't really want to talk about that life too much because there was another life I led there. Anyway, came back to Durban, met my wife. When I met my wife, you know, around 2021, 20, she met me in the street, still a hustler. Got me out, got me, you know, a little bit focused in life, but I was still who I was. You check. Anyway, got back into work, into construction, start working. But while working, I always found myself doing illegal shit. Sorry for that. I'm that just being honest here. I always found myself on the wrong path. While on the right path, always detouring because why? I always wanted more, man. Well, whatever I had wasn't enough, man. And, and another thing, I could never keep a job. I could never keep a job because I used to always move the supervisors or the foremans. I could never take instructions. I'm being 
100 with you here, bro. Mm -hmm. Being 100, the people yeah. that's going to watch, that's going to comment and tell you because they know me. No, yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I, 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 I could never can keep a job. I was, I was a boss. Well, they used to call me a Manjaro on the site. They knew me on the sites, you know. But I could never keep a job because once a supervisor of foreman says something, I don't like, I'm moving in. Then I'm getting fired immediately, going home, regretting my decision. It's too late. Look for another job. I got tired of that cycle. So 2015, 20, 2015, I said, nah, this is it, man. This is not for me. I'm not a follower. I, 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 knew, I knew I was never a follower. I left work, I resigned. I spoke to my wife. You know, she backed me up, she said, let's do it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I took that money because I was working for 12 years, which okay? but off and on, off and on, off and on. From the age of 17, I, used to, I was working construction off and on. So I had provident fund. Took my package, moved to job work. This was all in work pen, my last job. Moved to job work. I took that money and I went into what I know. You understand? Mm -hmm. The hustle. I went into the hustle. My brother was living with me. He, my brother, I grew him up from 16 to 21. He checked his teenage life till, till, till he became a man. So this could, can sing, like, like, like he, he can sing. And I opened a record label. When I opened a record label, I used the street money to fund his music career. Because I, I thought if one of us can make it in this life mm -hmm. and break that generational curse, for me, I've achieved something before I close my eyes. You check. Okay, push, push, push. Never work out. My bro got big, you know, found get other, uh, you know, other vision in his life and things like that. So that was a cancel. And then I came into Forex. When I came into Forex, I had money from the street, from whatever I was doing. I had money. But let me tell you something, dog. When I say this thing hit me broke, I mean this thing hit me finished where I was at a point where I didn't even have money to go back and do what I was doing to get money. This thing hit me in the bro. I, 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 like bad. Abriak. Finish, 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 finish. This thing finished me. I always tell people today, I got no new old money, my friend. All my money is new money. Forex finished all my old money. That was my school fees. I sold one of before you know before I sold one of my cars. I stepped back and I started watching the charts. Decided to focus on one index. That's how you see I'm US 30. Decided to focus on one index, and I started seeing secrets in the way price was moving on that index. I created a strategy around that thing. When I created a strategy and I was you know, checking, okay, price is on a go there, price is on a go there, might get a drawback to you. And it was doing what I was anticipating yeah, yeah, yeah. after the strategy that I created. I sold my car because I had some, I had three cars. I had a, I had no more money, but I still had a, three cars. You know, I had assets. Mm -hmm. I sold the one car and I funded that money. And I start trading. I start trading according to the strategy and no longer being a gambler, you know? Hey, bro, I start making money, though. I start making money. I gave this course to some people that I knew. My same brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, the one that first spoke to me about trading, mm -hmm. I gave him this course because he had experience in the game. He said, hey, bro, this thing is legit. I can see, I'm, I'm seeing the magic here. I'm seeing, I'm seeing this thing working. I opened an Instagram account. My first Instagram account I opened now, December. I never had social media before that, never ever. Opened Instagram, created a company, Indice Hustlers, what, what, start getting people in. Start, I 
creating competitions. I started giving out the course for free. These people that I was giving the course to for free, they were making money off their shit. They were selling it, when reselling I it. it. I now this, this shit is the shit because you must not always undermine myself when it comes to this type of shit, computers and whatnot, because I've only got standard six. You see, I was expelled in standard six. So I I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I'm i not clued up with all this type of shit. So I needed people to confirm that, hey, this shit that you created is the shit, it's, it, it, it's real. Once that happened, I start selling. I start selling the course. When I start selling the course, that's when I saw I, I'm, 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 I'm really on something. I'm really on something. And that grew confidence in me, myself, as a trader, to go harder in what I created, which is a strategy, you know. And yes, yeah, I am today, bro. Highly profitable trader, living a life that, yo, know, for me was a dream. Though. For me was a dream. I love. I, yeah, lo yeah. I love the story um, of how, like you mentioned, not old money, new money, and um, and the thing of where, like you've mentioned, you've you've been down and out, so you know what it's like to have nothing. And you also yeah. know the other side of knowing to have money as well. And I think some sometimes people pity themselves. Like I think, and you and you can maybe expound on that. And let's maybe we'll we'll get back to the trading now. When when you were there in Secunda, taking a shower at a tap, there must have been days where you thought like, nah, there's must be something better in this where you maybe want to give up and then you just realize again like nobody's gonna stretch their hand out straight up my man. to, to ricardo up. and i think sometimes in life and this is not real talk for the listeners sometimes in life don't expect anyone to put out their hand to pick you up it's only you you yourself that need to to pick yourself up and also maybe you'll you'll see now what ricardo mentioned he gave out that strategy for free and he was actually now stretching his hand out to other people where somebody else wouldn't have stretched their hand out to you. You hear what I'm saying? So a lot of times in life, um, and this is this is something that I, it's a core principle or value that I basically see the world as, is I always say, be a bridge for the next guy. Don't don't cross a bridge. Do for others what wasn't yes, done for you, what you like, wanted to be done for you. That's why I always say yeah. if if you if you do something, always be that bridge for someone else. Like I've I've helped people as well, and then a guy asked, "No, but can I give you money for it?" And I said, "No, don't give me anything. Just the next time, if you've got the ability to help somebody else, and you are in a position to help, pay, pay it forward. forward. Be that bridge. And and it, this is not just to do with money. This is to do with in general life. Like even." like the the racial thing where i always say we as individuals black white colored whatever we need to be a bridge that unites people and not divide people and once we start to realize that you can be a bridge between different nationalities between different parts of life um then that is when life starts to make sense it's not it's not always about just getting to the destination but it's about how many people can you pull with with you to that destination that's true the the thing there was a lot of times bro where i want to do give up but give up to what mm. to go where back to family asking for help being treated like a dog mm. and that thing of sympathy standing looking for sympathy in your current situation makes that's you just, weak but my man my man that's that's a waste of your of your life if you don't get up and do something you know about your situation you're never going to move forward in this life and i was a type of person that i used my family their eatfulness the 
no, no, not helping me. I always use shit like that as motivation. And I said, I'm my shoulders, mother. You understand? Mm. I'm my shoulders, mother. I'm a do that. I'm a do that. I used to do things to throw it in your face. Make myself something to show you. I'm self-made. I did this without you. You see? And that, bro, that, 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 that carried Anger. me in every situation in life, dog. I used every downfall, every hurt, every pain as motivation. You check, I, I made it a strength in myself. On that, uh, you, you mentioned, obviously, only trading uh, indices. Was there any stage in your trading where you looked up to a mentor or somebody? Or was it purely that you went to sit down and say, okay, flip, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this. I looked up to a lot of mentors, but soon found out they're all scammers. They can't actually trade. True. People are living off clients nowadays. You know, I'm just being real here, though. No, I looked no. up to a lot of people in the industry. But when it came down to it, people sat in my trading room and I just saw blowing. You understand? So, so for me, I lost all respect. And then it came down to the point where I was buying people's courses before I created my own strategy. And when I was going, I bought everyone's courses. Everyone you all think is big traders, I bought their courses. Went through their courses and found out all that shit was things I learned that's on YouTube. Mm. Everything in these courses is what's on YouTube. People will teach you everything that's on YouTube, but don't teach you how to apply that into a strategy, mm. you know, and be consistent on the chart. You can give me books of information. But without the key points of execute. each book to show me how to use that information, it's useless. Correct. So and you've that's got, what I do. You've got all of these loose I, ends, but you don't know how to put the how dots to together. How to implement it into yes. one that you know that's going to be work. So that's what I did. I looked at all the flaws in all the courses, and I created something of my own simplicity. I just teach people how to actually make money. Finish. End of story. End with, of story. With, All with of it, the little nutty, 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 go to YouTube. With, with you saying that, um, I think you would also know that you've, you've gone through a lot of material and stuff. You, you would have seen that it's actually the simple stuff that everyone overlooks that makes the money. Yes, sir. It's like, yes, sir. I actually... I found it. I actually posted on Twitter as well this morning, just showing a, a simple uh, chart of Euro USD, and I said, "Look how simple it actually was this entire year to trade Euro USD." But we tend to try and jump through hoops, and we want to have something fancy, or it can't be that simple, or this or that. But it's so complicated this thing. They complicate trading is simple. The psychology to trading is the hard part. Yes. But actual trading, analyzing the chart, knowing where price is heading, knowing where it's gonna retrace to, bro, that's that's preschool. You understand? <laughs> the psychology to trading is what where now yes. you start getting technical. That's where you need a mentor, you know. But the actual analysis of a chart, come on, bro. People just I don't know, they try to be in, look intelligent or sound intelligent. These it's YouTube simple. videos and it, 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 it don't make sense, man. Listen, uh, Ricardo, I, I see you guys. Unfortunately, I only saw now that you guys were in Port Elizabeth. I would have loved to take you and a team out for, for a lunch or a dinner. But, uh, oh, you stay that side? I'm in Port Elizabeth, yes. Okay, I've been okay, I've I've okay, been in okay, I've okay. been in Port Elizabeth for I would say the better part of 19 years. I actually come from So you know place. PE. Well 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 just I stayed in Short of it. Yeah, I know where Short of Yeah, so then you know why when I say Yes, no, no, that's no. a part of life I don't want to talk about. You understand? Yeah, I know. So uh, I'll I'll chat to you. We'll I'll 
I'll take Ricardo and, and his team out for a lunch when they're back here or even just Ricardo. Um, but this is what it's about, guys. This is this is the real um, the real facts about life. It's not a, a dream that's being sold. Um, you got I appreciate the, the story, Ricardo, telling telling the truth from from the bottom up. And I really hope that guys can find motivation in that that somebody like Ricardo that didn't have it easy, that didn't come from money, they didn't have a backup, they didn't have somebody to say, oh, look, Ricardo, you can fall back on this or fall back on that, where it was literally, if your back is against the wall, there's only one way to get out and that's forward. So I really, I really want to want you guys to find encouragement. Uh, be sure to check out Ricardo's um, Instagram page. We'll also have his links in the bio. Um, I'm also going to make contact with Ricardo because this is actually an awesome story. And, and these are these are life lessons where you can learn from someone else that has been on another side of life that you maybe haven't been. And it's always that thing of what can you take from one another? Where can you support one another? And where can you build one another up? So Ricardo, really, really appreciate um, this podcast. Uh, we'll also look at having you on again with myself and you can maybe just jump through a few charts. Uh, we can show the guys a few things on the charts. But um, sure. but uh, but again, thank you so much. Thank you for taking out your time. I, I really enjoyed it, guys. This was really awesome to have something real on. Um, some real, real life talk. And again, seeing the success from the ground up, showing what is possible. So really appreciate it, Ricardo. Any closing comments that you want to make or any any motivation for guys out there that's maybe struggling or that's maybe finding themselves in the in a similar situation that you found yourself in years ago? Much respect for everything you said, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, to, to people coming new in this game, this is not a get rich quick thing. This thing will end you. The little bit you have that you think, you know, you can make yourself someone, you lose that too. Forex is about chasing the skill. Once you've acquired a skill, consist and you consistently with small accounts, go trade micro, you know? Don't ever trade demo. I don't do that shit. Go, go, go <laughs> trade micro. Once you're consistent on that small accounts, then you can start looking for money to invest because look at this thing as a business, not just a get rich quick thing. So if you, if you open a business, you need capital to invest. You invest, you look for, go find sources of getting proper money, invest and make money on that money. You don't want to put a thousand rand and want to make a million rand. You, you can't do that in the everyday life. So if you look at Forex like a business, you will be successful. Make sure you acquire the skill first. Once you acquire the skill, you find consistency. After you find consistency, you find money, capital to invest in yourself as a business, you the business. Once you invest in yourself, you apply your, your, your skill, your consistency, and you'll be like me one day. <laughs> Easy like that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate having Ricardo on. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe and go and check out Ricardo on Instagram. Thanks so much, Ricardo. Respect, bro.